Okay, hi and welcome to Custom Brushes, your free video from Schoolism.com. This is from my class, Digital Painting with Bobby Chu, that's me. And uh, first, what I'm going to teach you is how to make this brush. This one is my absolute favorite, or one of my favorites. It's wonderful because it feels kind of traditional, yet it is 100% digital. And I always love it when you see paintings by artists where you're just not sure what it is. Is that traditional? Is that digital? So today I'm going to show you how to make this. Okay, but first let's start off with just a default brush, a brush that we're probably all very familiar with. So how does a brush work? You can see the circle icon here. Brushes work almost like stamps. If you put a whole bunch of stamps together, then you get this brush stroke. But if I create a lot of spacing for my brush, you can see that the stamps become very, very clear. And if we change the spacing all the way down, and you do this by clicking on brush tip shape in the brush menu. And if you don't know where the brush menu is, it looks like an icon like this somewhere along the top here, depending on which version of Photoshop you're using. It looks like a little folder. If you click on it, a menu like this should open up. The very first option of many options here is brush tip shape and if you click on that you will find spacing underneath and that's what I'm talking about so if you reduce your spacing down quite a bit then you get more of a brush stroke now the other thing is, is that you can see up here you have opacity and you have flow right opacity most people know what that means that's how see-through the paint will be flow is the rate at which the paint will come out of your brush so if I increase my flow very high you can see that the paint is coming out extremely quick and you can barely even see any of these little stamps that I was talking about that create the brush stroke. I want you to reduce this down to about 20 percent and that is going to help with the brush that I'm going to teach you how to make. First thing to do is to change this circle stamp into something a lot more organic. You can see that I've also provided for you a couple files, paint texture, paint texture 2, and this splatter. Now what is this splatter? This is actual traditional medium. Okay, this is ink that I just splatted onto a bunch of paper. I took a nice little splatter and I scanned it into the computer and that's what we're looking at now. When we change this into a stamp for our brush, it's going to look at how dark areas are in this little image. That's going to determine the opacity of that stamp. So if we made this very light gray splatter into a stamp, it's actually going to be quite transparent because it's already pretty light. So what we're going to do first is we're going to press image adjustments levels or control L if you're on a PC, command L if you're on a Mac, and you can see all the different values within your image here. You can see that most of the image is white, like the background here. You got a bunch of tones that are more mid-range and nothing that hits black. So to create more contrast, we're going to just bring over the little arrow here and tell the computer, I want these values to be pure black and all the way up to here, this is mid gray. So th this over here would be more like 60, 63% uh, black, right? And we're gonna press okay. And now we have a much more contrasting stamp. Now the other thing to notice is if I really zoom into this, you can see these very faint little artifacts Okay, we don't really want a lot of these little artifacts. We want to clean it up a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select white for my color here. And then I'm going to paint in areas that should be white and just make sure they are absolutely white. And clean up some of these artifacts. Okay, now this little swatch is ready to be made into a stamp. And how do we do that? We're going to go to Edit, Define Brush Preset. Edit, Define Brush Preset. We're going to click on that, and you can see it's going to ask you to name your brush. You can name it whatever you like, and then you can see that the little icon here is exactly the same icon here. Now down below it says 118. That's the amount of pixels, the maximum amount of pixels, either lengthwise or widthwise, showing the exact size of this brush stamp. 
I'm going to press OK and you can see instantly my brush has turned into this icon that matches perfectly with the paint splatter. Now what I want you to do is just open up a file, 3000 some odd pixels by 2000 some odd pixels, okay, and when I use my brush right now, you can see that it almost looks like tire tracks or something like that. Now why is that? It's because our spacing, it's too high. If we reduce our spacing down, you can see that our brush stroke gets a lot smoother. So that's the first step, okay? We're gonna reduce our brush spacing down to 3%, 5%, something like that. Now, why wouldn't you wanna bring it all the way down to 1%? Well, when it's 1%, there's gonna be way more little stamps. It's gonna be three times as many little stamps in a brush stroke than if it was 3%. And what that means, it means that the computing will take three times more computing power to make your brush strokes. So a lot of times you wanna keep that at a minimal. A lot of times you wanna keep your brush spacing as high as possible while still getting the same effect that you'd like. So I'm gonna keep mine at about 3%. Okay, but still right now, this does not look like the brush that I was just showing you. Now, one of the next steps here is texture. However, we don't have a texture yet. So let's go to this example right here, and this is a texture that I've already edited. And how did I edit it? Well, it's edited in a way where it's tileable. So if I copy that swatch and I put it down here, you can see if I grab the swatch, duplicated it, and put it right beside the original swatch, you can see that's seamless. Okay, so this means that this pattern will repeat seamlessly. Now, how do you do that? And you can do this with any texture you'd like, okay? So this is the original texture, and what is this? This is a bunch of acrylic paint that I had left over. I just splatted it down, made it nice and thick so that I can get that nice paint texture. And through this texture, I did a couple of adjustments so that it's repeatable. And I'm gonna teach you how to do that right now. So first thing that I'd like to do is I would like to get rid of the color by going up to Image, adjustments, hue and saturation, or control U on a PC, command U on a Mac. And we're gonna reduce the saturation down all the way, all the way down. Okay, I'm gonna press okay. And now you can see it's grayscale. And the other thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to image, adjustments, levels again. These are all the values within this little document here. I wanna up the contrast. I'm gonna tell the computer, this is where I want all my black values to be. I want my white values to be over here, my mid-tone values over here. So I'm just gonna grab this, bring it all the way over, and you can see that now there's way more contrast. I'm gonna press OK, and now let's make it repeatable. So to make it repeatable, we're gonna go up to Filter, Other, Offset. Okay, and if we just move around these little dials here, as it already has done, you can see that it moves the image around. And when you move the image around, you can see the seam lines. Now, you don't want to see these seam lines. It's not going to make for a good texture. So I'm going to press OK at this point. And now we can concentrate on filling these little cracks up so that it is seamless. And to do this, I'm going to need my stamp tool. With my stamp tool, I'm going to make it a soft edge stamp. You can click on any one of these default stamps here. And if you can't find a soft edge stamp, all you need to do is press shift, left hard bracket, and you can see that the stamp has now started to soften its edges. If you press shift, right hard bracket a bunch of times, you can see that the edges will harden right up in the little thumbnail here. Okay, we want it soft edged. So shift, left hard bracket, and how the stamp tool works, it will clone an area that you would like to repeat. So how you wanna do this is you wanna first target an area and you can see that my little icon has turned from a circle to a little target, a tiny little target. And this is done by holding down Alt, okay? So if you hold down Alt, you can select the area that you want to target. So for example, if I want to target this area right here, I'm just gonna hold down Alt and then click down on the area that I'd like to clone. And you, and you can see that there is now a little preview of that cloned area. Right, I'm gonna keep my opacity 100%, my flow quite high as well, and then 
when I press down, you can see that it's starting to clone from this area right here. Now you wanna make sure that your pattern, whatever pattern you're creating here in your texture, doesn't look repeatable. It doesn't look as repeatable as possible. So you're gonna constantly retarget areas by holding down Alt again. Click on the canvas to select whichever area you want to repeat and then select the area that you wanna paint over and start painting. Now you can see these, this little squiggle line here, that is very distinct. I don't want that to repeat for sure. All right, so I'm gonna hold down Alt, click down with my pen, and reselect another area, and go over any areas that feel like it looks like it's repeating. I'm gonna do this for the whole entire document here, get rid of all those seam lines. You also wanna keep the texture as even as possible in terms of tone so that you don't see these nasty repeating tones as well as uh, more distinct artifacts like this little squiggle here. And I'm actually gonna get rid of this squiggle because it's just so distracting for me. There, now the seam lines are gone. I can see that the pattern will repeat now. There's no seam lines. To test this out, we're gonna go up to Filter Offset again. So Filter Other Offset. And we're gonna move around the arrows to see if we see any seam lines. If we don't, that means it's working, it's looking good, and we're ready to go. Okay, so now this is a repeatable texture. And what we wanna do with this is we wanna put it into our texture library. That way we can attach it to the brush that we were making. So to do this, I'm gonna go back to my brush here and I'm gonna go up to edit. Instead of define brush preset, this time we're gonna to go to define pattern. And through define pattern, it's gonna ask you to name your pattern. You can name it whatever you like. I'm gonna press okay. And now if you go into your brush options, by clicking on the brush options icon again, uh, or if you already have it open, you can go down to texture here. And in texture, if you click on the little arrow beside your thumbnail, you can see that the last texture in your texture library is the texture that you just worked on. Okay, so we're gonna click on that. And now this texture is attached to the brush. What I'd like you to do now is go to your blank test page, or if you didn't make one yet, you can make one now and you can see Right now, I can't see the texture here, and that is partially because right now the mode that I have here is on height, okay? So what we're gonna do with this is, first, we're gonna change this to darken. Okay, now I can see a bit more of the texture. Now what I like to do is go over a couple of these options. So first option here is invert. So what that means is if your texture was really dark, now it's gonna be really light in terms of the alpha channel. So darker it is, the more the computer will pick up on it and the more paint that will come out of that darker area of the texture file, okay? Hopefully your texture is very even in contrast and you went through the different steps that I went through by adjusting the levels, okay? so. What I would like you to do is test it with invert clicked on and invert clicked off and see which one kind of brings out the texture more, okay? And apparently when it's clicked off for invert, for mine, you can see the textures a lot more. So now it's starting to look more like a traditional paintbrush, which is really nice. The next thing that I'd like to show you is the scale part of things, okay? So if I have my scale really high, then you can see that the texture is really big. And vice versa, if I bring my scale down to really small, you can see that the texture now is very crisp and small. So you wanna adjust this according to the document size that you're painting on. If you're painting on a bigger document, you might wanna scale it up. If you're painting on a smaller document, you might wanna scale it down. I'm gonna keep it at 100% because it works with the document size that I'm working with right now. Next thing that I like you to do is notice this little check mark right here, texture each tip. 
you can see that when it's clicked off, the texture is very even and it's almost like this window into the texture file that you have there. When you click it on, you can see that the texture is applied more like per little stamp. The other version, and you're painting almost like a window to your repeating texture file. So I'm going to keep that on because then we're going to have more of a natural feel to our brush stroke. But it's definitely something to experiment with, with any kind of brush that you're using if you're adding in texture. Just try different combinations between invert and texture each tip. You can click them both on, you can click one on, you can click the other one on, or you can keep, keep them both off. There's not too many options there, so it's nice to kind of sort through them and look at which ones work best for you. Now the next part I want to show you is depth, and that pertains to the amount of texture that you would see in your brush. Right, right now I see a lot of texture, it's at 100%, but if I reduce this down to say 35%, you can see that you barely see any texture at all. So you want to find a nice mid-ground to work with, okay? I like heavy texture with this, so I'm going to keep it quite high at about 90%. Now let's go on to the next option. So brush tip shape, we worked with that, that one's good. We're going to go to the next one here, shape dynamics, okay? And what I want to do with shape dynamics is I want to control the size of my brush with pen pressure. So to do that, I'm going to go to control here. I'm going to pull down the menu and select pen pressure. And from here, just underneath, you can see minimum diameter. I don't want it to go down to a point. So I'm going to make the minimum diameter something like 40%, 30%. So it is quite close to the maximum amount, which is nice because then it feels a bit more like a real paintbrush to me. Something optional that you can do as well is you can add some angle jitter to your brush so that your brush stamp will constantly jitter around, rotate, so that you have a bit more of this kind of look here. I don't really like that as much. Some people do, so I wanted to show you. I'm gonna keep it at 0%. It feels just a bit more brush-like to me like this. Then after that we have a roundness jitter and roundness jitter means the same thing as if you do this to your brush you can see that now I kind of flatten my brush a bit, uh, scaled it so that it's a bit more vertically squished. I'm gonna leave that normal okay but it is something else to play around with. Roundness jitter means that it will randomly change the amount of squishiness of your brush. Okay I'm gonna keep that off. Next option that I like to go to is transfer. Under flow jitter, go to control, and we're gonna have the flow controlled by pen pressure. Okay, so the more pen pressure, the more flow, the less pen pressure, the less flow. And you can see when I press lighter, you can see that the flow of the paint comes out a lot slower. And therefore you can see the paint a lot more. And when I press hard, it actually becomes more opaque. A lot more paint is coming out at a much more rapid rate, which is nice because you would like to control how much texture you're gonna be working with. So that's a nice option. And you could turn control for opacity onto pen pressure as well if you like. I am not. But you can see that all of a sudden you have kind of like even more control of how transparent your paint is going to be. Totally a viable option here. It depends on what you would like to do, what feels good for you. Okay, I'm going to keep mine off, but definitely feel free to experiment. The next part to this is noise. I'm going to click on noise, and what that's going to do is, actually we will see this a bit better if I turn opacity to be controlled by pen pressure as well. Let's zoom in a quite a bit. You can see a little bit more graininess. That's what the noise is. Okay, and if I go like this, you can see that it's just a bit smoother. Noise adds grain to your brush. Okay, I like keeping it on. So this is without the opacity controlled by pen pressure, but it has a little bit of noise there. Compared to no noise, 
it just feels a little bit smoother. There's just a tiny bit of grain there. So I like that. So I'm going to keep that on. And there you go. Now you have a nice brush here where it feels like you're kind of painting with real paint. Now before we finish, we want to make sure that we save the brush. This is so important because if you select any other brush throughout the process here and you go back to your brush that you've been making, you're going to see that all of the options that you just selected have reverted back to normal. So to save your brush, you can click on this little icon right here. It's kind of like that universal icon for new. You can see the same kind of icon in my layers menu here. We're going to click on this icon. It's going to ask you to save it. You can save it with the size or you can save it without the size, meaning that if I click this on, every time I go to my brush menu and select this brush, it will go back to this 200 pixel size brush. If I click it off, then when I select this brush, it will be at the size that I currently have the brush before at. So in other words, if I have my brush on something else and then I go to this brush that I just made, say the brush I was using before was at 300 pixels. Then when I select this brush I just made, it will also be at 300 pixels. Okay, so you can click this on if you like or click it off. I like to keep it off because generally I want to use the same kind of brush size that I was using previous if I'm switching from one brush to the next. And there we go. Now if you go into your brush menu, you can see that the last brush here is the brush that you just made. For all those people that have been sharing my videos and supporting my channel, I want to do something really special for you guys. I am going to select one person and give one of you out there a full one-year subscription to Schoolism courses where you can learn literally from the best in the industry and it would be all for free. And if you want to switch courses at any time, and this goes for any Schoolism subscriber, you know that it only costs you $1 to switch courses and you can do this as many times as you like throughout your subscription. All you need to do is share this video and hashtag it Schoolism Tips. After 48 hours of the launch of this video, I will select a winner and announce it in the details of this YouTube video and contact you via direct message or Facebook or whatever it might be.